a few of you have asked why I use a combination of both logic and Pro Tools when I'm working to picture. And indeed, not just why I use this combination of doors, but how. So let's head back to the shed to check this out. <laughs> There is good reason for all of that rubbish that you saw there, along with the bitsy that will become clear in a minute. Now, the way that I'm working, Logic and Pro Tools, is not kind of some queer system that I myself have just kind of dreamt up. It is the way that I think a lot of people have settled on the best workflow. I think what you've got to understand is your main door, your sequencer, acts as your individual cues. So you can see here, I'm working on this series home. Here's my cue 2M10. So in here, I'm concentrating on the nuts and bolts of the actual music. Moving over to this second screen, but on the same computer, I'm running Pro Tools, which is more of the kind of overseeing Sauron, the entire project the arc. Let me just pull this in so you can actually have a look at this. What will become apparent very quickly is there are so many things that you just can't do in Logic and I believe Cubase as yet. One of the major uh, aspects of Pro Tools is the handling of multiple films. So in the case of a film you get between, I don't know, 5 and 14 different reels depending on how much of a blockbuster you're working on. And you can see here these video files what I can do is, is actually put those in with film. What you usually get is real one will start at hour one, real two, hour two, etc., etc. Now, working on a multi episodic series, if I activate this episodes group, what you'll see is I'm not only going between episodes, I'm going between different cuts. So that's episode one, and that's episode one locked. So here's the video file, here's the split track. So that is going to be your dialogue and effects, and here's the temp. So instantly, when you start it over here you have a real overview of the work that you've got to do and then here are my checkerboarded cues the reason i have two lanes for my cues is if any overlap which they will do momentarily here's a little kind of case study that i made earlier let's go chm226 intro so we've got the opening my sync now when i'm not doing a tutorial what i like to do is use my mixer to split out the different aspects of the audio so i've got my logic out coming out of the the main two here and i just always i just have a absolutely static level that i work at here here and also with the dialogue so that sits there so basically i could just quickly jump on and, and scoop stuff out and i keep that at a, an absolutely uniform level and then i've got my click here so that's the fine cut i've since been set a lock that has changed. So let's prepare this Pro Tools file for this new version and then go in and reconform the logic files. I'm sorry, I'm really bunged up. I've got a terrible cold at the moment. And what we're going to do is create a new playlist, import the new video, new track, main video track, import audio from file, and that will prompt me to go where, where do you want me to stick that audio? We need to spot that in correctly. And this is why I think you must always ask for Bitsy burnt in time code. There will be three time code points that you'll see between Logic, between Pro Tools, and between the picture itself. And it's a way of checking sync in triplicate. So let's just put that uh, together with that. And let's have a look at what has changed. So we've got our nice time lapse here at the beginning. And then they've removed me, which is interesting because I've actually purposely laid some traps for myself. Okay, so let's reconform, go into logic. Let's go open recent and let's start with the second bit. <laughs> Okay, so that's coming in bang on the dogs bar six. So we now know when we move back to this new cut, we need to find that sync point there. Great. So basically what we need to do is create a moment, not actually on the start point, but on that one, which is going to be, you can see the beauty of this 01, 00, 09, 11. So we've got that, 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 and that. And how I synchronize the two is just via MIDI MTC. It's this IAC driver that was set up for me. I don't know how it was done, but basically it communicates logic to Pro Tools, but I do have it going the other way as well. So Pro Tools can drive logic, but it's very rare that I do that. So I'll put synchronize in on Pro Tools.
Now, what's great about these reconforms is you can also see stuff that's a bit kind of clunky. So I just want to quantize that a bit better. What I do then is bounce it, 102 version 2, and then I save as version 2. I've got my dashboard set up. This would all usually be ergonomically set up for the two screens. And then it's simply a case of dragging. Let's put that in. So save that. And then go to the first queue. Now, theoretically, unless they've changed the timing of the time lapse, this should just simply work. However, as I said, I have laid myself a trap. So instantly there are problems there. Obviously I'm going on for too long, but I can immediately hear that there's some really nasty kind of key clashing going on. So first of all, what I want to do is address that. I think I'm a kind of a semitone out. So let's try going up one. Okay, I'm just going to remove the whole of the second section. What I'm trying to do is get, get out of the way of the, the low notes that are coming in. I'm also just feeling now that it feels that there's just too much of a, a hiatus between the two cues. So I'm just going to take this down in tempo and see how this feels. This, it has a kind of a, a, a rhythmic logic now to it, so... That'll do, as they say, for jazz. So what I'll then do is bounce that out, version two into there, voila and voila. So I think that that hopefully demonstrates why having this overseeing eye is not just great for project management, moving between cuts, it's not just great to establish your thematic arc, but also it's the mu musicality of the cues and how they interact with each other. Obviously, I set up a real car crash there, but gee, even that just that last thing I did where I just slowed the tempo down so there was a bit more of a kind of rhythmic kind of cohesiveness between the two cues starting. Even if you've ended a cue, you know, then it's just tailing off for a good few bars then another cue comes in, you may find that actually it just feels like, you know, it feels like I'm coming in on a 16th offbeat as opposed to the one. From this point, sending stuff off for approval, what I would usually do. So I put the sync back in there. You can hear the sound of the dogs. So I'm going to bounce out, bounce out to QuickTime, a version, and that'll go into the bounce folder. And then I'll also do a version without the dialogue or the sound effects so that the director and the producer, if they, they're so inclined, can really get inside the queue and go, listen, what is it that's bothering me? So again, bounce to QuickTime. And then I'm just going to name this M-O-S, which stands for Mute of Sound, so Mute of the kind of sound effects dialogue. And then we'll have those two tasty little files. We'll compress them, all of the different cues, and then I've got a handy little Stream Deck thing that'll call me up, we transfer, whack that in there, and off they go. But it doesn't stop there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to demonstrate how I quickly stem out everything. So let's first do this. This is just one instrument, but we'll do that. Okay, put them into stems, and then I'll go to the other. Isolate each individual one. So let's start with woods, and I'm doing this with the reverb on. And then what I'll do is I'll create tracks for this. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to 
assign them let's do bus 9 and 10 and what I'll then do is duplicate those so that we have the checkerboard as well so basically what I'm doing is creating a summing mix and I think it's really important to sum within Pro Tools not uh, within Logic because the way that the panning structure in Logic works, the way that if you hit zero in Logic, it doesn't distort because there's a cheeky little limiter in there, all of that kind of stuff. You know, basically you bring in all of the stems. It should be identical to the full mix and with no distortion, all of that kind of stuff. So let's just pull these stems in. So we've got that one in piano and we make that piano B. And this is Woods. Let's make sure they're all spotted in. These are the demos, and then our piano here. Okay, I'm just gonna mute that for now and create the full mix here. Okay, then I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mute all of those. Obviously, it's just the one instrument, but I think it's uh, it's quite good housekeeping to have it on a full mix anyway. Right, and then final bit of prep. I'm just going to put these in mute, this out. Going to make those tracks inactive, and also change their size. Going to get rid of all of this muck up here. Track delete along with the alternate playlists, and then I'm going to select get rid of them remove not delete and the movie files as well and then what i do is save copy in there we go usually would take a little bit longer than that and there we have our dedicated file with just the stuff that they need all made and tidy compress we transfer Bob's your uncle. From being able to view all of the, the temp waveforms so you can see the work you've got to do, being able to see the work that you have done, being able to look at the work in the context of the thematic arc, being able to view maybe a reel with a director with a little mini dub that you can do, all the way to these recuts where very unexpected things happen not only within the cut itself and with the cues themselves but their relationship with each other. Then all the way through to creating uh, versions for the directors and producers to look at in order to approve and once approved for either the creation of stems or indeed multi-tracks to take it to record maybe an orchestra to or to mix but certainly also to prepare stems and your final conform for the dub. And what's really great about using Pro Tools, if you do start early, you'll basically learn all of the chops that you need to get started, particularly as a composer's assistant. Everything that I've kind of shown you today pretty much is 95% of what you'll need to do with Pro Tools. If you do that on your own projects a few times, you do inadvertently become a Pro Tools ninja. So if you have any further questions about this, please don't hesitate to ask. Just put them in the comments down below. I do read them. Thanks as always for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Be churlish not to. Lots of tutorials like this coming up. Ding that bell. I'm one of those for Oscar and B, the stars of the show.